والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Islam is for every race Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the beauties of Islam I'm Yusuf Estes and for the next few minutes we're going to talk about another of the beauties of Islam We've talked about a lot of the different aspects, teachings, and understandings in Islam and discovered so much beauty surrounding each of these. And in this particular series, we want to talk about the rights and the balance that goes with it. You know, everybody worries about their rights. People talk about human rights, animal rights, grandparents' rights. Now they're talking about plants' rights fish's rights, the whale's rights. But we find that Islam is giving us something predating all of this and more explicit and more balanced. Because if you allow me to write a book of rights, I'm going to be sure to give myself plenty of rights. The same would be true for anybody. Whoever is going to write the book, he's going to make sure he gets his rights. But what about the other fellow? Will he get his rights? And so when we look at Islam, what we find is an amazing thing. Because Islam gives you the balance. Rights and limits. Rights and limits. The first and foremost is the only right that has no limits. And that's the right of Allah. Almighty God, the Creator the sustainer of the universe, the one who created you, he created me, he created everything. He has the ultimate right, the right to be worshipped without any partners. There is no limit on that. You worship him according to the way he wants you to worship him. That's Islam. That's the meaning. One of the meanings of Islam is that you are surrendering and submitting to God and giving him his rights but the balance. Now, what do I mean now about this balance? Because there has to be a balance in all the things that we do. Let us take, for instance, a man and a woman. Right away we'll say, okay, women's rights. Well, because that's real popular right now for people to talk about women's rights, isn't it? Women's rights, women's rights. What about the man's rights? We don't hear people talking about that much anymore, do we? Because, in fact, if you said man's rights, it'd be like, oh, so you don't have women's rights. But we look to Islam to find out what is the real balance. This beautiful teaching in Islam is that there are absolutely rights for everybody. Everything Allah created has rights. Human's rights, men's rights, women's rights, children's rights. Listen to this. Even your enemies have rights. Anybody that's captured in a war, there are rights that are ascribed to those people. They have rights. Even though they're enemies, even though you've captured them, you still have to give them their rights. So, as a prisoner of war, he has the right to be fed and clothed. He has the right that you're going to care for him in the same way you would care for anybody and give them what they need, medicine, medical attention, and so on. Even in the war itself, the enemy who's fighting against you, he still has rights even while he's fighting against you. How? Well, let me give you an idea. The Quran is clear about this subject, that you must never fight anybody unless they're fighting you. So if there is a war going on, and they're fighting and killing you, then you fight them, but look at this, immediately says, but if they stop, you have to stop. Because why? Rights. They have rights. And in the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, he says, okay, if you're in a war, and some people said, you know what? We stop. Okay, you stop. And if, even he just killed somebody, but he says, I want to change here, I want to become a Muslim. I want to enter Islam. You can't kill that man. Even though he just committed murder, you can't. Because he says, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. That means, by the way, I bear witness, there's none to worship 
except him, Allah. He has no partners. And I bear witness, Muhammad's a messenger. Now, it doesn't mean that anybody can just walk up and kill people and say that and then they get away clean. No, but it means that you don't kill them. You, you cannot continue the battle against them. What you can do now is take them for judgment. And the prophet in his time and whoever the judges are now will listen to the whole story. But at least look at this. Rights? You're giving rights to a person that was just attacking you. How about rights for your own family? And Islam is giving that. Islam is giving the rights for the family more than you can imagine. I was just looking at this before the program and I was so happy to see this. It, this is in a collection of teachings of Muhammad in a book called Sahih al-Bukhari. It's actually a, a nine volumes that we have in it. And this is in, I'm, t I'm taking this out of volume four, but uh, it doesn't really matter. What's important is what's being said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, talks about the statement of Allah in the Qur'an. And uh, it says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Wa taqallah, Allah di tasa'aluna bihi wal arham. This is something amazing, because it says here, to have taqwa for Allah. Now we talked about this in another program, but I'll mention it again. Taqwa means to put a barrier or partition between you.